Hi there, welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today. We're gonna be doing a deep dive talking about everything having to do with the Brahma chicken as far as how to raise one or how to take care of one, how many eggs they lay, their temperament, and so on. Before we get into that, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel and subscribe to our website. If you subscribe to our website using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chickens and a deep in-depth breakdown of each one, how to care for them and how to make sure they produce a lot of eggs for you. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So the Majestic Brahma is an old breed with its roots far back in time. As with many heritage breeds, the exact genetic makeup of this bird is unknown. Historians have reconstructed the likely origins of this noble bird from clues left in the poultry books and journals of the 1800s. Famed for its size, known as the king of chickens, it's a docile, calm breed that is both a meat and egg laying bird. In today's video, we'll discuss everything having to do with that, including its size, disposition, egg laying, capabilities, breed history, and more. To start off, let's talk about the background and history. We first hear this bird being called a Shanghai in the mid 1800s. The Brahma chicken breed fueled the US and the UK hen fever of the 1850s. The Shanghai is a cross between a Malay and a Cochin bird. Since these birds were brought to the US by sailors who had been in the Chinese city of Shanghai, the name stuck for a while. They crossed Shanghai with the gray Chittagong, which hails India, specifically an area near the Brahmaputra River in Bangladesh. The crossing between the two birds may have occurred here in the US despite the exotic names. Development of the Brahma chicken occurred primarily in the US from imported birds and they refined the breed over a relatively short period of time, around 50 years or so. Most experts agreed that the bird came initially from China with some Indian fowl influence. In 1852, a breeder named George Burnham exported nine gray Shanghais to Queen Victoria in England as a gift which she adored by all accounts. Now, Mr. Burnham must have been a smart businessman because he saw the price of his birds rise from $12 to $15 a pair to $100 to $150 a pair as a result of this gift. The dark Brahma was developed in the UK from the stock of light Brahma imported from the US. The Brahma chicken was the best breed for table fare until the advent of the newer production breeds in the 1930s. The Brahma could not put on muscle and size as quickly as the newer birds and slowly fell from favor. The most recent listing of the Brahma in the Livestock Conservancy directory puts it in the recovering status thanks to its newfound popularity with backyard chicken keepers and homesteaders. Now let's talk about the breed standard. The official poultry club included both the light and the dark Brahma in the first published British poultry standard in 1865. They admitted the light and dark Brahma to the American Poultry Association in 1874. The buff Brahma was admitted in 1924. And the Brahma chicken is a large bird, almost as large as the Jersey Giant. A Brahma will stand around 30 inches tall. It has a long, deep, and wide body. It stands tall, giving it a narrow V when viewed from the side. The Brahma has a pea comb and a beetle brow where the forehead slightly overhangs the eyes. The beak is short and strong. The plumage is dense and tight with a thick covering down under the feathers. The rooster should weigh around 10 pounds with the hen being around 8 pounds. In the 1850s, the bird was much heavier. Between 18 pounds and 13 pounds, pounds respectively had been recorded. There is a bantam variety of the Brahma with five recognized colorations, light, dark, buff, black, and white. Although black and white are seldom found, bantam roosters will weigh 38 ounces and hens 34 ounces. The bantam varieties are hard to find with breeders listed. It is considered an Asian breed for classification. The Brahma chicken also sports their own set of boots that can be de detrimental to their health in cold climates. More on that later. Yes, they have feathered feet which give them an adorably cuddly appearance. There are three recognized feather patterns, light, dark, and buff. The designs are very distinct and there's no confusing one for the other. The contrasting of the patterns in each variety is quite intricate and stunning. For the light color, a contrast in black and white, the light Brahma is primarily white with a grayish undertone. The hackle feathers have black striping with a little striping in the saddle area. The tail is black with the covert feathers laced with white.
coloring the birds require double mating. As far as the buff pattern is essentially the same as the light with buff taking the place of the white. The warm coloration of the buff has made it a favorite with many folks. Uh, white and blue Exacure and gold partridge have been other color varieties still around. Still, none have remained popular enough to be put forward for the emission to the APA or excite really a lot of interest in the general chicken keeping world. Now let's talk about the Brahma's disposition. We've already said that the Brahma is a large bird and it can be very intimidating to a child or person that is afraid of birds, but the Brahma is a gentle, non-aggressive bird. It is a friendly, docile, calm bird, and they are said to be very easy to handle. They do not fly well, so they are fairly easily contained. Although they tolerate confinement well, they do very well as foragers. These birds are very suitable for cold climates with all that thick feathering, given that the soil and environment is well drained, so they don't have to worry about getting their feathered feet cold or their or feathered feet wet, because then this would become an issue. You should avoid having their living quarters in wet swamp swampy or muddy areas because it can lead to foot problems. They make great mothers and tend to set on the nest well. They're not overly broody, but this can depend on the line of birds you buy from. They're usually fairly high in the pecking order since most hens seem to be intimidated by their size. The Brahma isn't known as flock bullies either and can generally get along with most other chickens. Now let's talk about the table fare and eggs. The Brahma was initially bred as a meat bird or for the table. In the 1800s, the bird was in fact much larger and one bird could easily feed a large family cheaply. Between 1850 and 1930, the Brahma was the table chicken unrivaled by any other. Even nowadays, the size of the bird is enough to feed a family of four. But if you could prefer to keep your hens for eggs, the Brahma performs well enough. The hens will produce three to four eggs per week. And here's the excellent news. They prefer to lay from October to May, just when your other girls are thinking about shutting down for the winter. The eggs are medium to large in size and brown in color. The downside is the hens can take six to seven months before they even start laying. Now let's get into some of the common health issues. With all feather-footed fowl, the feathering can be problematic in the winter. The feet can become wet and muddy, which can lead to frostbite and freezing temperatures. And when the feet get wet or muddy, the toes can develop small mud balls, severely damaging the toe if not dealt with. You ultimately need to pay special attention to their feet if they're allowed in the winter snow and ice. Although since their feathering is so dense and tight, keep a sharp eye out for lice and mites. Inspect their legs frequently for scaly leg mites too. It's not easily to spot in feathered foot breeds. Occasionally a foot quill will catch on something and break off and they can bleed profusely, but the application of pressure followed by cornstarch or styptic powder will usually take care of the issue. Other than these minor issues, the Brahma is a robust individual bird with a good overall health throughout their life. Since the Brahma chicken is a hefty breed, they are more prone to getting bumblefoot. When a large breed jumps from roosts, for example, they land on something fairly sharp, the weight of their bodies can push the foreign object into their foot. This can also cause infection, bumblefoot, and even lead to death in the long run. So is this chicken right for you? If you love large, friendly hens, then the Brahma would be a good choice. It's a very calm hen, which would make a great asset to a family flock. Small children may be a little nervous or scared by their size, but will soon grow to love them. Their calm demeanor makes them perfect for a 4 H project or even the show ring where they generally do quite well. Some special considerations for the Brahma in the coop would be sturdy roosts, slightly larger nest boxes to accommodate the hens and slightly wider doorways just because the bird is fairly bigger than the normal bird. Since the Brahma is such a large bird, it takes longer than the average chicken to mature. Some folks say they can take up to two years to fully mature. The chicks are usually robust and hatch quickly and they feather in rapidly as well. They're usually pretty inexpensive to buy from hatcheries, unsexed chicks are under $3. Sexed chicks are slightly more expensive, but still well under $4 per bird. If you go to a dedicated Brahma chicken breeder, the stock quality will be higher and the chicks will cost you more. So to summarize, the Brahma at one point was known as the king of chickens until equaled or surpassed by the Jersey giant. If you think you might like to have Brahma chickens among your flock, do a mental checklist of the things that we just went through that will be slightly different from your regular standard chickens. You may need to modify the coop and its furniture to accommodate these large birds, there's also the feed cost as they will eat a bit more than the common chicken. So feed bills needs to be estimated. Also feathered feet require some attention in the wetter, colder months. But I have to say that my feather footed hens don't go in the snow or mud, which is their choice. They don't think they like their feet wet. I've never heard of a Brahma with an attitude and they're friendly and docile. 
Of course, the roosters might suffer a little from testosterone overload in the spring, but what rooster doesn't? If you have space and opportunity to home some of these fine hens, I encourage you to embrace them. I don't think you'll be disappointed and they are a good addition to any flock. So let us know, do you already have Brahmas in your flock? Let us know in the comments below. And that's gonna do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening, thanks for joining. If you find our content interesting, if you learn something new, please be sure to like this video and subscribe. With that, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.